Today I want to talk to you about Google Voice. I've had a few people ask me questions about setting up Google Voice and using Google Voice. I use it. I have other friends that use it. It's not the easiest thing in the world to deal with. It's not the easiest thing in the world to set up and it's certainly not the easiest thing in the world to understand especially for non-technical people. So when I come back I'm going to go through the process of setting up a Google Voice phone number for yourself and I'm going to show you and I'm going to explain to you how I did it and how it works for me. Hey! Roger. Oh, cheek. Roger. Hello there. Okay, here we go. Google Voice. For those of you that aren't really technically savvy, let me explain what it is, okay? Google Voice is a voice over IP system. VoIP. You, I don't know if you've seen that expression before or not, but here it is right here. VoIP. V-O-I-P. And what that means, if you're familiar with Magic Jack, some of you may be familiar with Magic Jack. Been around for number of years, I think it's still around, it's, it's a voice over IP system. It's just basically a telephone system that you're using over the internet instead of over a twisted pair cable network, you know, running from telephone pole to telephone pole like we are used to seeing uh, from back in the old days, <laughs> you know. So anyway, the way Google Voice works is you... Here's how I use Google Voice. I use Google Voice here in Ecuador on my computer. I don't use it on my phone. I, 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 there is an app for it on my phone, but I don't like it because every spam call that I get from my old phone number back home ends up ringing on my phone, and I don't, I don't want that because 99%, 99.99% point ninety nine percent of the calls that I get on my old phone number are spam calls. People wanting to sell me extended warranty for cars that I haven't owned in years. But anyway, when I want to make a phone call in the United States and I'm sitting here at my desk here in Monta and I want to say I want to call my sister, I get my trusty little headset here with the microphone on it, right there, and it's it's a USB headset. I plug it into my computer. It becomes active. I launch Google Voice on my computer, which is a web-based application, and I pull up the, you can see the screenshot here, I pull up the dial pad, and I call my sister, and I talk to her as if I'm sitting right there at my home in the United States. And when she gets a call and she sees her, the caller ID on her phone, she sees that it's Don Shader calling and she sees that it's the phone number that she's known me to have for, for years. It's a phone number that I've had since 2007. So the process of getting this set up is like this. You have to do all this while you're in the United States. You have to do this while you have your existing cell phone service. Okay, so let's say, I, like I use AT&T. My telephone that I have right here, whoops, minus that, right here was, I bought this at AT&T. It's an iPhone 10R. And the phone number that's on this phone is the faint same phone number that I've had since 2007. I logged on to voice.google.com and I established an account. You have to use your Google account, okay, because it is a Google application. And I signed up, I'd launched voice.google.com and you see a prompt on there to get a number. I was able to pick a number, and I picked the number, and it's free, and you get to keep that number, too, as long as you use it. I think you have to use it at least once a month, or Google takes it back away from you. 
So what I did was I set up the account. I, again, logged, logged on to voice.google.com, and I created an account for me based off of my Google account credentials. Okay, you have to have your Google credentials, okay? Just like you have to have Google credentials to subscribe to my channel. To, watch, to subscribe and to like the videos like the one you're watching. Once you sign up for voice.google, or, or I just, I'm just going to call it Google Voice now. Once you sign up for Google Voice, you get a phone number. You can pick the area code that you want the phone number to be in, and if there's a number available, they'll give it to you. Now, before you close your, your mobile service, before moving to Ecuador, because you don't want to make international calls from Ecuador, okay, you need, you'll, you'll be getting rid of your, your local phone number. You can port that phone number over to Google Voice. Now, I'm, a lot of people, you know, have a hard time understanding that concept. But basically what you're doing is that you're telling Google that you want to use your existing phone number instead of the one that Google gave you. You pay a one-time $20 fee, U.S. dollar, to Google to port that phone number over, okay? And by the way, all of these instructions are online. All of them. Everything you need is online. So, when you, and when you port that phone number over, now you can go close your account at AT&T or Verizon or T-Mobile or wherever it is that you have your, your phone service. And you can stop paying for that service. But guess what? Your phone number is now at Google Voice. And you still have that same phone number. And it's good all over the world. Wherever you have access to the web, you have access to your Google Voice phone number. So to say that you have a bank account in the United States and you're trying to log into it and your phone number is registered with that bank, okay, this is, I'm talking about the phone number that you've had all these years, it's registered with that bank and you need an authentication code to use for dual factor authentication, well, what will happen is that your bank, let's say it's Charles Schwab, will send a six-digit code to that phone number. Well, guess what? It goes to your Google Voice, and Google, Google Voice will send you an email that you can open on your phone, okay, with your Gmail account. If you have a Gmail account, which I'm hoping that you do, then you can get that code right off your phone. You don't even have to call or anything. You take it right off your phone. It'll be in your email. And then if you you want to make a phone call back in the United States, and you, you're already here, here in Ecuador, and you want to make a phone call to family, and friends and family, or to any business or anything in the United States, all you have to do is log on to Google Voice, use the dial pad, put on your headset with your microphone, and make the call. As long as you have an internet connection, you'll be able to talk, you talk all day long. I use this all the time. I know that this is a hard thing for some people to grasp a hold of, but if you have trouble with it, drop me an email and I'll, I'll, I'll give you a call, okay? Drop me an email, give me your phone number, and I'll give you a call and I'll try to help you understand it, how it works. But just to recap, okay? I'm just going to recap here. Let's say you have an AT&T phone number, mobile phone, and you want to keep that phone number. You want to close the account with AT&T because you're not going to need them. You're not, you're not going to use them while you're in Ecuador. And by the way, folks, you do have to have your phone unlocked. You have to unlock your phone. That's probably the first thing you should do is unlock your phone. At AT&T, I went to an AT&T website and I was able to unlock my phone online. But back to recapping the steps. Unlock your phone, set up a Google Voice number, port your phone number to that Google Voice number, then close your, your account before you come here. I actually, I didn't close mine until after I was here for a, a couple of weeks. 
then that phone number is protected and it's parked at Google Voice. And then when you get here in Ecuador, you take your phone, go to Claro or Mobistar or Twenty, wherever you want to get your local phone, get your SIM card for it, and then you'll have a local phone number, and that's the number that you'll port to WhatsApp. You don't want to port your Google Voice number to WhatsApp. You want to use the phone number that's on your phone when you're in Ecuador. Right. It's a lot of information. I hope that it's not too confusing. All this information's online. But if you need help with it, drop me an email. Give me your phone number. I'll give you a call. I'll try to walk you through it. But keep in mind, you need to do all of this before you leave the United States. You've got to do it before you leave the United States. If you come to Ecuador and you try to set up a Google Voice number, when, you, when they try to authenticate you, they're not going to be able to do it, okay? Because they have, they, 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 they won't, they'll tell you when the service is not available in this country. The other question that will come up a lot is, do you have to have a VPN? I don't, I, you don't have to, but folks, I wouldn't be here without a VPN. I guess that's another video. But to use Google Voice, I don't use a VPN uh, when I'm calling my friends and family back home and when I'm calling through Google Voice. So anyway, I hope that helps. I hope this is of some value to you. Uh, like I said, I sound like a broken record. Drop me an email. Give me your phone number. I'll call you as soon as I can, and I'll try to explain it to you. And I hope it works out for you. I couldn't be here without my Google Voice phone number and having my old phone number is still tied to it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. If you like this channel, please subscribe. It helps. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, you can thumbs down it. If you want, it doesn't make any difference to me. I can't please everybody. From Monte Ecuador, good luck to you. And I'll see you on the next one. Ciao, ciao. Just in a video.